Hello and welcome to my videos. Today I'm going to show you how to use a Raspberry Pi 4 and a Diet Pi server and sync thing to get a file server on your system and use sync thing to back up your Android devices. Now I'm just going to zip through this really quickly, this first part and the second part because if you're going to attempt this you should already know to burn an SD with an ISO of your choice. Okay, so first of all, we need to go to dietpie.com. As you can see, they've got lots and lots of different images. I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi one. Extract the 7-zip. Uh, so we get the image, and then we can burn the image with whatever software you want to use, but uh, we can use Etcher on Windows or Linux, so that's why I'm using it. Once that's done, plug the SSD card into your Raspberry Pi and wait for it to boot up. Then you can use PuTTY if you're on Windows, or SSH if you're on Linux, to log into the address, the network address. So as you can see, uh, it's exactly the same process in Linux and Windows. The first thing is doing, asking us, do we want to change the passwords? No, and then it asks us to update the system, which we've just done. First thing I want to do is go to uh, DietPy config and change the host name, because I've already got a DietPy on my system, but you may not want to do this. So we're moving along in this menu system using tab to go to the OK or cancel and then press enter when you're on the one that you want. Next we need to install a file server and we're going to install a Samba file server. Tab down to OK. Down to install and then tab to OK. You can uh, opt in or opt out there. Just following along. Once you've finished, it takes you back out into command and then it logs out and you need to log back in. We need to go to uh, dietpy-config, um, sorry, launcher. And we need to go to the drive manager because I've got a hard drive plugged into my dietpy. Now we need to make sure that it's mounted. So we mount the drive, tab down to OK, and then it'll ask you, do you want to change the, the name of the disk? And it's always better to have it as ext4. Now if it's not ext formatted, you may want to do that now. And then we're going to put the user data onto the external drive. And the swap file. Now we won't be able to transfer the root file system because it's mounted, so you'd, again, you'd need to unmount it. Okay, go tab down to OK and then back. Tab over to cancel, and that brings you back out. And now the, uh, the file server is set up. So we need to log in. So we browse the network and we find test dietpy. Uh, we need to log in as a registered user, dietpy, and then the password, which is dietpy, obviously. And then remember that password, okay? You can see all the folders on the file server are empty at the moment, so we'll just put a, a simple file in there. Okay, so you can see that we can write to there, write to the file server. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to log out. Uh, we'll have a look at Windows, from Windows. You see I've got a diet pie on there, so go map network drive and then you want to put in the uh, folder as um, slash slash, in my case test diet, slash diet pie. And again fill in the details of the password and you can see that that file is there. So what about writing to uh, the file server? ext4 which is not read by windows but it does allow you to put files on there 
Samba is independent of the file system, basically. Okay, so you can drop files in there, or you can make a new folder, and then drop the files in there. Okay, so we know that the file server is working now, from Windows and Linux. So we're going to install and set up SyncThin, start DietPy Launcher, and then DietPy Software, Software Optimized, tab down to OK. And then we're going to go down the list, as you can see there's lots and lots of software that you can put on a DietPy. Now it's number 50 that we're looking for. Press Space and then tab to OK, then Install, go down to Install and tab to OK, and then it'll start installing it for you. Okay, uh, we can see from um, sync thing that we need to use the address. Our address is 192.168.0.159. If we do that, we can't, can't reach it. So we need to put colon 8384. Click yes there, and then settings. And GUI, you need to put uh, the user and the password name, it logs you out, the browser asks you to save, and then you need to put the username and password back in, so it'll log you back in. That's to log you back into the sync thing. Okay, here we have sync thing. Uh, and I'm presuming that you've downloaded sync thing onto your Android device. So on the server, you need to show the ID, it brings up this QR code. On your mobile, tap Devices and then Plus, and the QR code reader, Device ID. If you haven't got this installed, you need to install it. And it'll automatically put the code in for it. Then you need to give it a name. Press tick. And then you see on the server then, the phone is being recognised, the device is being recognised. So we're not going, to, not going to share any folders from the server at the moment. We don't want to do that. And on, the, on the phone, tap on folders, plus give the, uh, the folder that you want to share a name, and tap on directory. And normally I just press select you and it backs everything up from my SD card. You want to make it a send only. So you need to share it with temp diet. And then that will pop up on the server. You need to change this then and use slash mnt slash diet pi underscore user data slash sync thing underscore data slash and then put in uh, a folder that you want and sync thing will automatically add that folder and then it starts syncing and you see the files are changing and when it's complete you'll have up to date on the folder and the device once you see that then you can, if you wanted to, you can turn sync thing off on your mobile by pressing the three bars and then press exit. There you go, that's all done. I hope you enjoyed that. Keep coming back and I'm sure there'll be more videos to look at.